Welcome back. Today is Friday and that means FNA Friday. And today is going to be part three and I will be talking about planning. I'm also planning on eating this today. Ooh, yes, because I mean, it's been a while and then why not? It's chocolate and it's good. Kind of hard to talk like this. Okay, so before you go into your planning stage, should have had that chocolate. I'm going to assume that you know the story, the characters, the environments, your shot length, and the camera. So that's my assumption. You know all of this. So as you have your structure ready and the environments and the characters and everything, now you want to plan your animation. And I want to talk about two things. A little bit of reference. We talked about that before in the Q&A and I have a specific clip just about reference. So I'm not going to linger too much on that. And the second part is thumbnailing and drawing. Now I can't draw <laughs> at all. But for reference, as always, find a buddy if you can act it out. If you can act it out, that's even better. Obviously it's faster and it's easier, but it's also okay to find someone that's really good and direct that person, no problem. So I'm going to show you an example that I shot a long time ago. That's not even in our house, that's in our old apartment. But I show you what my process is when I shoot reference. So first, I shoot a ton of reference. So that's a lot. And I shoot it over and over and over and over. And this is not even everything. There's a character in the background that is falling here. There you go. So I keep falling and falling and falling and trying and trying and trying different things. Because I don't want to shoot just something once. It has to be a couple times. So I kind of am less conscious of it. It's more free flowing, a bit more natural. And I have a lot to choose from. And a lot of times I pick things that are actually not what I acted out. It's kind of what's in between. It's in between a loop or something when I just try and move. I sometimes like that because it's a bit more natural. So obviously you got a ton of material which you can't use. There's a lot of stuff that's going to be thrown out. So I do my little select. So I have a little selection of clips that I like. These are the elements that I might copy paste into one master take. So as you look at this, it's <laughs> silly apartment yelling. I'm looking at elements of I like adjustments. I like things where there's something that hits the ground. I'm going to have something in my face, uh, how I hold the gun, certain looks. Is it a bigger reaction? Is it a smaller reaction? Again, I'm not going to settle right now yet on that one specific thing, but I want to look at what is the best take? Is there a good variation? I put my hand on the ground. Is that more interesting? Do I hold the gun all the time? Do I go higher with my yelling? So all kinds of takes. And I look at this from my foreground action, my background action. So whatever the, the element is or the elements are of the scene, in this case, it's multiple characters. Then what I do is I take the best takes and I copy paste and cut things out and put effects in it. Nothing too fancy. You want this to be fast, but I want to have a good idea of what am I doing? When, what element comes in? What's the timing? So I don't have to guess. With reference in any type of planning that you do, you want to take the guesswork out of it. Because otherwise you're going to be stuck in Maya. You try something, you play blast, you kind of noodle around and you're going to waste a ton of time. The better you're planning and the more thorough your planning is, the faster and I wouldn't say easier than I mean, you still have to do the animation, but just the less hiccupy your process is going to be. So let's take a look at this. Like I says here, the general idea of what's going to happen. Covering fire! So a little bit of elements in there. I know when I shoot, I know when I look, I know when something hits the ground that gets potential into my face, I'm gonna wipe it off. So that gives me a pretty good idea. And now I can start the process and the process will be whatever your workflow is, how you move on from that reference. Do you do thumbnails or do you draw directly in your animation package to kind of have a drawing on top of your sets? So you kind of know better what's going on. Maybe if you have a camera move, you gotta make sure that everything works with that camera move. Well, let's pretend you can't shoot reference, right? And I'm not talking about, let's say dragons or some creatures where you just have to look at animal reference and maybe combine things, but maybe you're in an environment where you can't do what you need to do. So let's just pretend tennis because I like tennis and let's pretend that it's raining and you got to do your thing right now and you don't have time to go outside in the rain. It wouldn't be good reference anyway, but you just can't go outside to play tennis. So then you just have to rely on images. You can still get a lot out of reference, even if it's just a photo. You can look at posing. Maybe someone has done a certain breakdown of a move just through images. Obviously with tennis, you can go online and you can get a ton of video reference. I'm just saying that sometimes if you can't get a video reference, there's still a lot to gain from photos that you can find of people that perform the action that you want to do. 
So even though you have video reference, sometimes it's also okay to just look at a photo just to study a specific pose, and in the case of tennis, a pose done by a professional. If I pretend to play baseball, it's going to be horrible. But if my animation needs to portray someone that plays really well, I'm going to look at footage and I'm going to look at photos where they capture specific poses and really well done moments and grips and throws because I can't do that. And if you want to be accurate, you got to look at professionals. Now let's pretend that you don't use any of this and you just kind of acted it out. You kind of know how it feels and you prefer to draw thumbnails. So again, I can't draw, so I'm not going to show you my thumbnails because they are useless, but I need to practice because I really want to get better at this. But it's a really neat book. And this is going to be very awkward to kind of go <laughs> through the images. So I recorded what's inside because I also have an ebook version of this. So as you can see, it goes through interesting posing techniques and it has cute thumbnails and it shows you how detailed you can or should be or should not be. And it's a really good resource for how you should approach the thumbnailing aspect because you don't have to have master drawings, you don't have to have crazy shading, you can just stick with stick figures as long as everything is clear. And I'm a big fan of that book. There are many other books about animation in terms of timing and you know the classic animation books, I'll do an FA about books later on, but I thought this one's really good just in terms of a simpler approach to planning. So let's pretend you have all of this ready. You got your reference, you got your research, you know your poses but you don't want to go straight in there and block things out because it might take too long. What would be a fast approach for planning out your animation to see how it works with your sets and potential camera move and so on. So one thing would be to actually draw inside your package or find a way to get an animated 2D version of your blocking. That was a plane early in the morning, I'm saying this again. So if you have the means of drawing, if you are skilled at drawing, not as horrible as I am, it might be a good idea to actually draw inside your viewport. And for that, in Maya, you can use Grease Pencil, which is one of many ways how to draw uh, inside whatever package you have. They're all different tools, but Grease Pencil is one of them. And there's also Blue Pencil 2. There's a previous version, but now there's a Blue Pencil 2. Uh, and actually from that company, I do have Keyframe Pro, which is a fantastic movie player that lets you draw on top of your frame I highly recommend any of these. So if that's a process that you like, where you can get inside your animation package and draw right there. And again, if you have the skills to draw and you can draw fast, that's a really, really good, fast and cheap and effective way to plan out your animation, especially in your scene where you can have the character interact with the set. Maybe it's like going upstairs and that's very tricky to block out with your rigs. So if you can do a 2D version of that, so much better. And if you're on the go, there are a ton of apps on the iPhone and the iPad. I'm assuming there will be other apps if you have other operating systems on the phones. I don't know, I'm an Apple user, so I got that. But there's a ton out there in terms of 2D apps. So if you wanna do a quick sketch, that is again also a way to just plan out something instead of spending time blocking things out to see how it's gonna work in your scene. So you can just sit back and relax and draw something out. In terms of a planning method, very fast, very effective. And if you look at these examples here, and I'm gonna use Adam Green again as an example here because he's posted so much stuff and the work is fantastic. So you can see the final animation and how he has planned it out in a 2D fashion. And that's not within the viewport, that's just a 2D version to see what the action could be. So he has this for Horton Here's a Who. You can see a version here for Feast where you can see there is another very effective method of planning things out is by using spheres. So you don't have to use your rake, you just have spheres or cubes to kind of see the rhythm and how things move and where it's going to be in terms of placement and staging. And if the composition is going to work, this is so cute. I love how the legs go up here. But you can see how time saving this can be. Then another example would be from Wreck-It Ralph. And you can see how there are some basic poses in CG, but he can still plan specific acting choices out in 2D. And there are multiple shots here as an example. And this is so fast, it's much faster and you can leave an object in your scene so you can stay on model so that the proportions are accurate. But you can see the fantastic work on top of the awesome planning. He's just such a fantastic animator. And especially with an acting shot that has so much movement, so many action choices and gestures, it can be really helpful to get a method in there that allows you to plan things out very, very quickly. So that you can pitch those ideas to your lead or supervisor or even a client potentially. So whatever you can do that saves time, that gets your planning done so that people understand your choices and the ideas. If this is your way, if you can do that in 2D, that's great. And the last example will be from Bolt. He just posted that recently. And you can see how there's a little bit of animation in there in the fence. So you get the timing of when it's supposed to hit. 
but the rest is in 2D and very effective. And these are by all means not the only ways to do it through reference or thumbnails or drawing in 2D. Every animator has a completely different approach. I'm just gonna point out these two that one, I use reference a lot. I also act things out myself so I kind of know how it feels. And I also just plan in my mind, which is something I can't really show, but I think about the shot and I try to visualize it in the most clearest fashion possible so that when I start a shot, I know the beats. And if you can't do thumbnails, sometimes I also write down the beats. I know this needs to happen here, this needs to happen here. But in general, I'm a fan of just acting things out so I understand the motion and I feel how it is. And if it's helpful shooting reference and sometimes really sticking to reference closely or just having that as a very rough guide, but sometimes that's enough of an inspiration to almost kind of improvise on the shot. Again, I don't recommend this because it can be a waste of time where you just get kind of lost, but you might get a shot or attack an idea where you're not quite sure what you want to do. And I had a shot like this where I did a rig test for Carpigeon and I just had to rig and I was trying to find a set. So to me, I looked at the set as an inspiration and I knew that I wanted to do a takeoff and a landing. And the landing also involved afterwards an audio piece to have a lip sync example. So this shot was actually the only shot I've ever done where I had zero planning. I just had a rough idea and I kind of knew that the pigeon's gonna interact with the car. But the whole beginning going through was all straight ahead, improvised, what if he does this? What if pigeon does that? Maybe stops and flies off. I've never done this since because I would definitely not do this on a, in a production environment because it's very risky. You really gotta have a plan and attack things in a clear fashion. But it was an interesting experience to just kind of go in there and straight ahead and see where it goes. It was a lot of fun to do and I actually I still like the shot. A lot of my older things I don't like anymore. This one I still kind of like. Now, workflow is very individual. and Everybody has their own ideas and their own methods. So if you have anything where you go, yeah, I use this, but I do a tweak on that. Or I do this, but on top of that, I try something else. Or I don't use this at all because of A, B, and C. Please let me know, comment. It's always awesome to share your workflow, share your ideas and your pros and cons and concerns. And that's it. Those are my two cents on planning. As always, you gotta have a plan. You gotta have your research done before you attack a shot. And if this was helpful in any way, I would love a like, I would love a subscribe, I would love a bell button click so that you get all the notifications. And again, if you have any other methods or links to other people that have very interesting ways of getting their planning done, please let me know in the comments. That would be awesome to share. Other than that, that's it for this part. Next week, part four, we're gonna talk about testing your rig.